Tuesday. Are you are you guys big Valentine's Day people? Or no. do you no. do you do anything? No. I think we're over that. Do you do anniversary stuff? Um we go to dinner. <coughs> oh bless you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean we go to dinner. Eat. But nothing on Valentine's Day? No. Just who has time for that? <laughs> do you have time for that? Uh, Are you gonna do something? I get her flowers and a card. But no, we don't. We don't do the the big Valentine's Day stuff. Buy flowers for wife. Then I'll record. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't bought them yet. I'm gonna pick them up at lunch, and because it wasn't. Oh, you're gonna hand deliver them? Oh yeah. I just, See, there you go. I just run a high V grab. She likes scrubber daisies. And the bright colors, you know, and stuff like that. Mm. So, remember when I said, "Hey, um, we'll probably add video to this episode." Yeah. So your decision was to wear a hat. <laughs> Wait, I'm covering your eyes. So, you know what? It's purposeful because I need a haircut. I knew, I knew I was gonna be sitting across from oh, the oh, extremely no. handsome hair and dress. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I did actually consciously choose this whole outfit because I was like, I did not have time to shave this one. I did not. My hair needs a haircut. I'm going with the <laughs> this. So, going back 26 episodes ago, episode one. Episode one. And we put a microphone in the middle of this desk. Yeah. We sat across from each other. And it was, uh, uh, the sound quality was less than desirable. Yes. And uh, and so this is probably going to be very similar to that in that the video, video quality is going to yeah. be less than desirable. But even more so the fact that nobody can see you. Right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hey. <laughs> We should look at that the entire time, just like this. We'll talk to each other, but we'll look at that. Well, isn't that what you're supposed to do when you video a podcast is look at the camera? I don't think so. Well, you like set it up so where it sees your face. It, and it can see our faces. Well, it can see my face because I'm not wearing a ball cap bent over my eyes. I'll pick it up there. <laughs> like you, a farmer wears it. You, you want it like this? <laughs> is that what you want? That's perfect. <laughs> no, pull it down. Hmm. It makes you more mysterious. There we go. So no <laughs> offensive coordinator. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was talking about Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. We can't get an offensive coordinator. But, oh, well. You look pretty grumpy about that. I am. Sorry this is happening to you. <laughs> it's, it's a big deal. I almost didn't wear the hat. I was so upset this morning. Ooh. Yeah. So... Who could they bring on that would make you, so we'll go two ways with this. Who would they bring on that would make you say, that's it, I'm, I'm done with these guys? Oh, I wouldn't do that. No matter who? No. They bring Bo Pelini on as offensive coordinator. <laughs> that would be interesting. Uh, nah, they're always my team. I'll always root for them. They bring, uh, Trying to think of somebody you don't like. But see, the thing is, is I have all the confidence in the world in our head coach. Yep. So I think that's what make, gives me confidence is like, even though he didn't get his number one choice, like, I, I still think he's going to get somebody mm -hmm. that's going to be decent. So. Did you watch the Super Bowl? I did watch the Super Bowl. Did you watch the Star Spangled Banner? Yes, Chris Stapleton. Yeah. I was surprised. Like, he, he just went very low-key oh, with it. Oh, was so good. And I was waiting for, like, a big moment. Are you, were you disappointed? 
Yeah. I like towards the end when he did the I don't know what you call it, but like that voice, you know, when he really projects and he's got that kind of quake to his voice, you know, that earthquakey noise, you know, like I wanted that the whole time, man. I was like, give me more of that. I'll cause that is that is one of my favorite voices. Yeah. It was awesome. It was. Yeah, it was. And he did it, I don't know music, but he did it in like a different, like a lower key or something like that, didn't he? Or it felt like his guitar wasn't loud enough. <laughs> well, he, he was he was also doing something that, that people tend not to do these days, and he was he was doing it live. Right. Like Whitney Houston, remember that iconic? <clears throat> oh, that was. But she was lip syncing. No. Yes. No. Yes, pre recorded. Yeah. It's true. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So he was doing it live. So you've got the sound, the live sound going into the stadium, which is going to be like mm -hmm. echoey, right? I think that probably plays into how somebody would perform it. But I thought it was great. I thought it was good. I thought it was really, really Consider good. Consider me. Yes. The number one. Yeah. The, the country music hater. Fan. Yeah. I'm the number one fan now. Okay. I've always liked him. So I've always liked him. I, I don't I I don't wanna I don't wanna What'd you think of Rihanna? I thought wow that woman's pregnant. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And she's like on this That this was platform. pretty wild. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean that was a very cool visual thing. I found myself thinking about the logistics of that, you know, during the performance. That's what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, they are, how, how are they doing this? Yeah. And they only get, what, 10 minutes to set up and tear down? So everything has to be so incredibly mobile, you know? Yeah, yeah I, was, I, was, I was impressed with the, uh, the stage. Like, that was mm -hmm. super cool. It kind of reminded me of high school show choir competitions. I haven't had to go to those yet. I mean, you're missing out. Yeah. I mean, you have so many kids in this church that that participate and compete. Yes. And we've got Millard West representation. Yeah. We've got Gretna representation. Mm -hmm. the Pillion of the South representation. Mm -hmm. Ralston rep mm -hmm. representation. Any others? That's four schools that I can think of just off the top of my head of these kids that compete. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, what they have is like a 15-minute show. And then they have only so much time on the front end in the back end to come in, change out platforms, set up their the, the, the set, if you will, bring their whole band in. And like in the case of Papio South, they have like 20 people in the band. And it's all backline behind the platforms. They're playing music? It's not like a recorded track? No, none of it. It's all live. Really? <clears throat> Piano, bass guitar, keys, electric guitar, um, and then trumpets, saxophones. Wow. What? That's impressive. It's a 20 piece. So they got to get all those kids in there with their equipment in a very tight, you know, what is it, kind of a tight mm -hmm. space because it's behind the platforms where these kids perform. And you only have so much time. Like, you're going to get, you're going to get, uh, uh, docked points, you know, if you're if you're over the amount of time that you're allotted. Hmm. So, has there has there been any like tracks scandals yet? Like, tracks. hey, they're pumping music in. <laughs> I hear I hear a lead guitar and that guy's not playing it. Like, oh, like backing tracks, like yeah, what's backing tracks. <laughs> like I hear, <laughs> I hear a lead guitar, and there's no lead guitar. Right. Um, Wow, that's a yeah. That's a pretty brilliant point because what what you could do is you could still have a lead guitarist back there, but you could have the the, the track right. pre recorded playing through because they right. also bring in they bring in their own PA and imagine right. that. So it's not just the band; they also bring in their own speakers and mixer. See, I, that's crazy. I think there needs to be an investigation. We well, haven't been to one, so like you're you're thinking about. But I'm already skeptical. <laughs> How do I know what I'm hearing is the real authentic thing? That's true. Kind of like, how do I know it's not our government floating objects over our own country? 
<laughs> oh, yeah. We're shooting balloons down, man. Not just balloons. Unidentified objects. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, people can see your air <laughs> quotes now. Yeah. Yeah. Unidentified objects. That are balloons. Mm, no. What are your sources telling you? Cylindrical. Right. Octagonal. Yeah. I mean, is that a balloon? I don't know. What are they trying to tell us? Lasers? Laser lights coming down from Chinese satellites over Hawaii? See those? I saw that, yeah. The green laser? Did I see it? Come on. You know I'm all over this. <laughs> what does it mean? Yeah. I was talking to a couple pilots I know. And was asking them, like, hey, you been seeing balloons or anything? They were like, you know, I videotape stuff from time to time that I should show you that would raise a lot of questions for you. Like, lights, objects, they're like, there's all kinds of stories of stuff up there that you're like, what is that? Are you not able to name these sources? Well, I, I don't want to say because they said it to me privately, so now that we're like, you know. Are some of these pilots on the average side of height? Or are they, <laughs> are they above average height? Uh, some of them are average, yes. Some of them are above average. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I'm trying to ascertain who it is we're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, I think you, yeah, would know some of them. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, that they, they're like, that's nothing new, man. There's all kinds of weird stuff up there that you see. Makes a person not want to fly. Yeah. But I mean, like, the Pentagon already came out. I mean, our own U.S. Navy came out and released videos of objects that they said we have no idea what these things are. Mm -hmm. And yet, that made the news for like a day. That, that should be top of the news every day is like, we need to figure out what is flying around out there. It's almost like the Pentagon and the news are on the same page. It's almost like that. I mean, like it would be, it would be very interesting <laughs> if, if like the government decided, you know, what would be good if we controlled what people got to hear. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be good for us. That would be good for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. But yeah, we're shooting stuff down, man. Yeah. Well, and we weren't. Do you, you know that Chinese balloon flew right over us? Yeah. Did you see that yeah. track? <laughs> flew. Oh yeah, right. Like the, yeah. Oh, that trust me, if I saw the actual balloon. Oh no, no. Yeah. I didn't look up. No. Yeah. Interesting. Yes, it is. Crazy times. Crazy times. Yeah. Yeah. That's for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, new sermon series. Yeah. Do we have a question? Do we have any oh, questions? Oh, we do. Yes, we do. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Because I, I got one. I got one. We'll do it at the end because it doesn't have it doesn't have anything to do with okay. with this sermon series. But do you have a question for this one? For this no, no, Sunday? No, I got, I got a question from somebody else. I got okay. an email. Good. Robin Gore dropping me a, a question. Nice. Okay. So Yeah, I got Stacy Milan. Okay. Say it with me. Myelin. Myelin. Yeah. Yeah. I'm ready. Um, at the end. Okay. Yeah. Are we doing one and saving one? Well, I think we should do both. Okay. Let's do it. All right. I think we're start, I mean, we're going to open the floodgates with all these questions here. Right. Yeah. Okay. Let's we'll see what happens. You're afraid that like, if we burn through the first two questions, we can always burn another one. <laughs> it took three weeks to get two. <laughs> so I'm thinking, well, let's, let's spread these out. Well, I think it's good because, you know, not only are we taking questions now, but we are going to have, um, from time to time, special guests. We are. And I'm thinking, like, special guest number one, any of these pilots you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we should. We're going to get to the bottom of this <laughs> before, before the government does. It's a great timing to have video. Yeah. Because now we can have, like, you know, graphics and things going on while we're... Oh, we can have little balloons floating? Well, no, I mean, like... Remember Balloon Boy? Yeah. Remember that? That hoax? I saw it. 
What do you mean you saw it? Oh, I was is that Florida? In, I, no. No, it was in Denver. It was outside of Denver. The little boy oh, right, that right, was right. supposedly up in the balloon, yes. but he wasn't in the balloon. And it was, the whole thing was fake. Yeah, to like promote their TV show that yeah. they wanted to start. So I lived in Denver when that happened. And I was driving back from the mountains because we were like up there for something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's all over the radio, you know, and all that's right. And so I can see as I'm coming down out of the mountains and coming into Denver, I can see all the activity, like helicopters and stuff. And so I'm like, I'm going near it. I want to see this balloon, you know? And so I did. I drove as close as I could get, but I, I was close. I saw it. You could see it? I could see it floating. At the time where you thought the kid was still in it? Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, like there was, there was a, like a, like two helicopters right near it. But then there's like the the news helicopter circling. There's multiple of them, like circling the whole thing. Uh, and I was watching that, and I was like, "Oh my goodness, that poor kid has got to be terrified." Did that dad? He get arrested? Oh yeah, he did. Yeah, they both did. Uh, and I remember the judge let them serve. I don't know why I remember this, but serve um, back to back so that one parent oh, was right. home. But yeah, yeah they, because. By all means, you want to make sure that at least one of those two parents is yes. home caring for the yeah. family. <laughs> but it was crazy because, like, uh, neighbors were like, that kid, like, they were telling the police, like, that kid was at the playground, like, an hour ago. Like, he's not in that balloon. Because, like, you remember, it was, like, six hours or so that it floated for eh, maybe four or five hours. And the kid wasn't hiding the whole time. He, like, you know, the police all came and, like, Somebody stayed, and then like they went like trying to catch this balloon. And, like the kid like went stuck out and went to the playground for a while and was playing with people, and then like came back to the house and hid. <laughs> what? Yes. And neighbors are like calling the news, and they're like, "He's literally at the playground right now." <laughs> yeah, that was a crazy story. That is a that was nuts. That was balloon boy. Balloon boy. <laughs> that was such a yeah. Where were you when Balloon Boy happened? <laughs> when you say Balloon Boy, I think of I think of the boy in the balloon. You know what I'm talking about? Like the the movie no. John Travolta. This is before your time. Where he was like he had some kind of immune deficiency. He couldn't be outside of his bubble. Bubble, bubble boy. Bubble boy. Bubble oh, boy. Okay. Yeah, so it was like a clear yeah. thing that he had to live in. I never saw it. Yeah. But. Speaking of John Travolta, uh, what was your favorite commercial? Because he had that that one commercial. Did you have a favorite? Commercial? I don't remember. I don't remember any of them hitting hitting heavy. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I was I was pretty wiped out, man. Like the yeah. game was good and and like interesting and fun to watch and all that, even though. Mm -hmm. Um, it's rigged. Uh, oh, <clears throat> but you don't like that call at the end? Is that what you mean? Nobody can like that call. I don't think it was rigged, but that was a terrible call. That was a terrible call. You can't make that call. I'm all for it. I'm not saying that they wouldn't have won anyway because they are. It's a phenomenal team. Mark Kicker. Okay? I'm not speaking <laughs> ill about yeah. your Chiefs. But that call was. Abysmal should never have been made. Yeah, and I thought, you know, before they do that, I thought they gathered and they say, "Hey, you know, like the other the other refs gather to say, hey, do we really want to pick this not? flag back yeah. up or not?" They can. They really should have. What do you think? Ah, you know, I I think, I think that because they said that they've made that particular call an emphasis this year, and I'm glad they do. Because I think it's gotten so bad in the last five years. You watch those corners. All they do is pull on jerseys, pull on jerseys, pull mm -hmm. on jerseys. Like, it's nonstop. It used to be, you know, in the Deion Sanders days, it was like, I'm faster than you, I'm stronger than you, mm -hmm. I'm going to beat you to the ball, and right. I'm going to guard you. Now it's pulling, pulling, it's pulling. Handy. It's all the time. But I think it's both ways, though. I think it's both ways. Well, like, offensively, it's I, think it, thinks, I think the same thing happens. Right. And, and, and to that point, if that's the case... You know, then yeah. let them let them do that. You know, if, if offense is going to be the same way, they're going to be tugging and pushing off a yeah. little bit. You know, let a little bit of that. I think that's part of the game. It's a physical game. I think let that go yeah. versus call everything. 
because it's it's possible that that decided the game. Oh, that 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 ended the game. Because then they could just knee it out and get that mm-hmm. kick. Yeah. 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 Huh? I mean, if it were Dallas, probably would have ended the game <laughs> because they couldn't have relied on the yeah. <laughs> True. Ah. Uh, hey. A new sermon series. A new sermon series, and I really loved Sunday. Yeah. Gosh, that was a message that um, that overall the topic of of being valued and valuable to our God, to our Creator, mm-hmm. is something that people really, really need to hear. They need to have that reinforced. Um, it needs to be affirmed. It, it's it's. Without a doubt, one of the more important things in today with the mental health crisis that is, right. that's taking place, um, with people feeling worthless, um, with uh, people feeling more and more isolated despite the fact that we have connectivity you know, through social media and the internet, through, um, through all those means, we have you know, access and connectivity to the, to, to the world. Like never before, people are feeling less valuable, less valued. They're feeling like they're not able to to measure up to all that they're taking in. Uh, they're feeling worthless, and um, so I, I I just think that this specific topic was. Oof. No, I was I was, um, you know, like we picked. That we're doing twelve of them, and picked like, I mean, a lot of the psalms are great, like they're great, um, but we we can't do all hundred and fifty, <laughs> you know, like. So when I I, I knew we wanted to do this one, um, Psalm one thirty nine, mm-hmm. and, and typically this is one you do on like a sanctity of life Sunday, you know, mm-hmm. when you talk about pro life value life, um, but you know, I was I I was thinking, man. That idea of being valuable and, you know, hand-woven by God, like, that'd be cool for, because, you know, I'm looking at the calendar and I'm like, that'd be a cool Valentine's, Mm -hmm. you know, like, because I do think um, we live in a time where, and and this is, well, I don't want to say that, that's not even true. All throughout history, people have been treated cheaply and as a commodity. Mm -hmm. I mean, even in, even in, Marriages, I mean, there are marriages right here on Grace Hill, I'm sure, I know of, that that people are are simply taking advantage of one another and, you know, the, that people are feeling underappreciated, undervalued. Um, they don't feel cherished. They don't feel loved, you know. Um, there's, there's young people in the single and dating game, you know, right now that don't feel valued, don't feel loved, don't feel cherished, don't feel special, you know? Um, and, and I was like, how cool would it be for Valentine's Day, you know, to, to acknowledge that and just be like, Hey, you know, here's this corny phrase that you always hear like, well, it's okay because God loves you and God thinks you're amazing and God thinks you're special. Like, let's put some meat to that, you know? And so I, I was, I, I, I was really excited about this one. Um, this was one that I kind of had circled and was like, I think this is going to be a really special Sunday. Um, and, uh, and yeah, the, it, it's always good when I'm preaching, you know, to, to look out there and see, are people tracking with this? Are they, you know, and I did, I, I saw people, I saw, I saw a couple people emotional even, you know, really? like, um, and then especially when you hit them afterwards with that song. You know, you say, you know, mm-hmm. and then end it with, you know, the uh, love of uh, how he loves. Mm-hmm. Um, I think all that together just kind of put a package together of just reminding us. I mean, it's okay to walk out of a Sunday one Sunday and just go, man, I'm loved. Mm-hmm. And just let it be, you know, and just let that bask over you, you know. Um, and so, yeah, I was excited about this one. One of the things that, that I think that people need to hear is in, in the point that you made that nobody knows you like God knows you. Mm-hmm. You don't know yourself the way that God knows you. God knows you thoroughly, completely, yeah. intimately, 
He knows every thought you're, you're thinking. He knows everything you're going to say before you say it. And he still loves you yeah. endlessly. Yeah. And um, that, that, that's terrifying, yeah. I think in some ways to feel so, so known and exposed. And I think people, um, you know, in relationships, uh, they, they might feel love from, from another, but they also know in the back of their mind, that, that person doesn't actually know them all the way. Right. And so in a way that it, it, it might cheapen it or, or devalue that love that they're receiving because they know, Right. That person doesn't know them yeah. thoroughly. If you knew everything. <clears throat> yeah, you couldn't love me. Right. I'm unlovable, you know? I think so many of us feel that way. I think that's that's natural. And, and almost, you know, maybe um, it might even cause some walls to go up, mm -hmm. you know, as far as returning love in that yeah. in that same way. But we have, a, we have a God who knows us and loves us despite. Yeah. Our sinful nature yeah and um, which is, I, I didn't get into this because this was like a side which is exactly what this podcast is for <laughs> this was like a side tangent that I wouldn't want to get into because it distracted but I mean like the, the idea that God knows you completely knows you better than you know yourself the more you focus on that the more that would change your prayer life because how many times are you fake with God even in your prayers you're like oh God you know, I'm sorry I did that, but you know they did this and that. And God's going, that's not why you did that. Mm -hmm. I know why you did that. It's because of this deep-seated thing or this sin that you hold on to. Or because you're like, like really our prayers ought to be like, God, I don't even know why I did that. God, I don't even understand. God, would you help me see it? Yeah. God, would you help me know? Like, I mean, how, how amazing would our prayers be if instead of trying to trying to pretend we have ourselves figured out and just acting like we know what we need, that we would just humbly come to him and go, God, I don't even understand what I need. I don't even understand me. God, would you help me understand why I did this sin, why I keep doing this sin, why I keep saying I'll never do this again and I keep doing it. Would you help me understand? Would you help me see? And God, would you help me in ways that I don't even know I need help right mm -hmm. now? God, just, and, and how freeing that would be. Yeah. To all the control freaks out there that are like, I need this, 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 this. I need you to fix this, this, this. Forgive this. This, this is this. how you need to do it. Yeah, the, to just be like, I don't even know what I need, yeah. but you do. M much in a way where when you're praying on behalf of others, lifting up prayers and petitions right. for for other people. Yeah. You know, a lot of times, I think it's very natural, you know, for somebody who's who's sick, um, to to pray healing. Yeah. We pray for healing. And and those prayers have power. There, there's a reason why we pray. And um, and yet God intimately knows the situation sur surrounding that, that sick person. Mm -hmm. God knows what that person needs. God knows the whys and God knows their future. Yeah. Um and so sometimes it's okay to say, God, you know, I know that you know that situation and um, just offer up a prayer for for peace and comfort and you know pain relief and discernment right. and support for the family well, and all that. I mean, like my wife is a nurse, you know, and, mm -hmm. and and she says all the time, you know, cancer and medicine, you know, um, but attitude and and will play such a big part in someone's treatment plan. Yeah, you know what attitude they have and what spirit they they hold on to, and I mean, like that's the stuff that we don't ever really. You know, like, hey, God, um, heal this person. But you know what? What about, hey, God, make this person strong emotionally. Mm -hmm. Make this person courageous. Make this person yeah. bold. You know, like, though, and that's the stuff that only God knows. Mm -hmm. God, I have no idea what my friend in the hospital bed is wrestling with right now. But you do. You do. And if it's worry for their family or if it's fear of what's it, you know, like, God, just... You help, however, yeah. you know. Um, it's just it's it's a beautiful thing. It, it, the phrase that I loved, um, and it's not mine, so I can say I loved it. You know, I I, I read it and I, I used it was, um, God knows everything about everything, 
And one of the things he chooses to know everything about is you and me. That's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. That, you know, I talked about that word search, like literally in the Hebrew, it's talking about a miner who digs deep under the ground. And it's talking about a man who, who searches out a new uh, unexplored land. You know, like he, he literally digs through every aspect of who we are to find out exactly who we are. And he knows everything about us. And that's so beautiful. And he wants a relationship with us. Yeah. He wants a relationship with us. Even um, after what he finds. Right. So I think you mentioned... Oh, oh, I have to go back at least in one of the messages you said, you know, I'm like first date kind of thing. You know, you're not necessarily revealing. Like, hey, here, here's who I am. Right. Here's everything that I've ever done wrong. Right. You know, here's what I'm thinking right now. I'm right. Communicate that to you. What a great first date that would be. Right. Yeah. It'd be the last date too. <laughs> the first time. <laughs> but uh, that, that's really, that's really what it is, is that we have, we have, someone who wants to be in a relationship with us wants to be in a closer relationship with us a deeper relationship with us and all the while knowing everything that uh yeah. everything that we've ever done thought said yeah. not said motive not done, yeah motives yeah because you can do good things but only you know the motive behind them. sure you know and and he knows it all mm -hmm. And yet, does he, does, and I want to be clear, does he look at our sin and say, oh, I love you anyways? No, no, no. He looks at our sin and he, he wants wrath and he wants justice and judgment upon us. But he loved us so much that he sent Jesus mm -hmm. to pay that so that he could be in he, he He looked at us and said, I want to redeem this person. Yeah. I want this person to be with me forever. Right now they can't. Sin separates us. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pay the way because there is something worth saving in this person. You preached recently uh, something that, that just comes to mind where we're so valuable to him that he sacrificed his own yeah. son for us. And neither one of us can sit here and, and think of anybody <laughs> that we would love so completely that we would offer offer our son's right. a sacrifice. That's just not, right. that's not where our, where our heads are able to go. Right. Um, so if you ever question whether or not you're loved, you're valued, mm -hmm. you're valuable, look at what our God did. Look at to, to the lengths, the lengths to which he went to redeem us. It's, it's, yeah, hard, it, it's hard, to, it's hard to fathom. It would be like a, a, mass murderer in jail <laughs> and, and they're, they're not even saying like I'm innocent they're saying like yes I did this because mm -hmm. I mean like God knows we do everything bad God knows that it's all true and yet God's saying hey I want you to go free and I'm going to put my son in there for right. a life sentence like that's crazy yeah, why would you, yeah, and he's like no no I know you did it mm -hmm. I know you're wrong I know you messed up I know you've done these bad things but I still see something we're saving in you. I'm going to let my son pay the price that you you owe. I'm going to set you free. Yeah. And I want to have a relationship with you. That's crazy. And I think not only do we need to know it, believe it, remind ourselves of it daily, then we need to act like that. Yeah. We need to act yeah. like, like we're somebody person yeah. worth saving. We're saving. That that um, that our creator values us in such a way. Right. So now behave that way. Right. Behave like don't don't. Yeah. Uh, Jesus said, "I'm going to die for you so that you can live for me." Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So live that way. Yeah. Live that way as a child that's been redeemed. Live that way as someone who is cherished mm -hmm. and loved, and who has been bought at the price of their own God's blood been bought at that price yeah I had a uh, years ago was going through some stuff and um, I won't give you the specifics of that but a friend of mine he he said uh, it's okay it's okay because Jesus loves you 
You know how you said, yeah. <laughs> oh, I got dumped or whatever, right? right. That's okay. God loves you. Right. Oh. God thinks you're so oh, handsome. Right. Oh, okay. oh, you're right. I, I, I'm good. <laughs> right. But he said that, that to me. He said, you know, I don't, he said, he, he said he, he himself doesn't worry so much about being valued by another person or being undervalued or being unappreciated. Yeah. Because of Christ's love. Mm -hmm. He said, that's enough. I was looking at him like, yeah, yeah but what else? <laughs> right. Like, like, I hear what you're saying. Right. But, it's, but what about here today on earth? Right. This situation. How does that help? And he's like, Jesus' is love is enough. But if, if you could be at that point, how amazing would that be? Uh, yeah. And that's what I was trying to, to relate. It was like, if we could really embrace how beautiful this this yeah. psalm is mm -hmm. that we could honestly say even if my relationships on earth aren't going well even if I don't feel valued on earth even if I don't feel loved and cherished on earth I'm good yeah because I have the God of the universe's love and affection mm -hmm. like how crazy would our lives be and again just going back to this point um, I think if we do if, if that is reaffirmed and we are reminded of that, and we're in God's word, and we're and we're experiencing that on a daily basis. And we will behave differently. Yeah, we will yeah. act differently. It's the just, more you remind yourself, the more it'll stay in, stay in there. You yeah. know, it's just front front of my top. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, yeah, and I mean it, that just the beginning of Psalm one thirty nine. You know, it, it's just so cool because he talks about. Um, how he knows our thoughts, but he also talks about that he watches everything we do. Like, even the mundane things, like laying around, like he watches those things. You know, I talked about 12 mozzarella sticks. Yeah, I didn't get to 12. Um, I didn't even, we didn't even have mozzarella sticks. I was oh, so no. disappointed. Yeah, we, we did have uh, toasted raviolis, which was just as good. That's pretty tasty. Um, but then the, the second point was that um, God's always with us. And in Psalm 139, it talks about there's nowhere you can go mm. where you can't be in his presence. That his presence is always with you. Um, and that we sometimes, we believe when we messed up, we got to hide or we got to avoid him or we got to. And it's like, you, you fool. He's standing right next mm -hmm. to you. Like, you can run, but there's nowhere I can go from your presence, God. So I can go as far as the east. I can go as far as the west. I can go to the heavens. I can go to the depths of the earth. You are always always with me you can't get away from me um and then and then that third point was you have a god who personally created you and that's just unbelievable and, and i loved and once again it, it wasn't my words um I, I i heard uh like i said i i listened to other preachers and i saw someone else make this point and i was like man that's good um, I got to share that with my people because there is no plagiarism in evangelism. <laughs> you hear something that hits you, like you better share that with people, you know? And he made that point about the whole uh, galaxy thing. And I was like, that, that just resonates with me. And I hope it resonated with everybody else. Um, that, that God spoke the universe into existence, but when he made you, he made you with his hands. That's crazy. And he knit you together. And the more you understand how it, how intricately made you are, and I talked about the optical nerves, one million optical nerves and stuff like that. Like, the more you, you understand how intricately you are made, mm -hmm. and to think of God up there. I mean, God is the one who says knits. Like, knits together. Like, little pieces, you know, like sewing you together. Like, um, I mean, it's just beautiful that he hand makes every one of us. That every single one of us has a purpose and a plan. Yeah. Like, you know, he, he's molding and shaping. He's like, hey, this one, he's gonna be, he's gonna be a singer and he's gonna do this and he's gonna be talented in this. And this one, he's gonna go and he's gonna lead a church in Omaha, Nebraska, even though it's a little Florida boy and he's gonna, you know, like, he, like, he makes each one of us with a purpose and a plan. Yeah. And it, it's just a, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing that, there are no mistakes, and there are no accidents. Um, because, you know, there, there are a lot of people that, that feel like a mistake. They feel like they're not who they're supposed to be. 
Um, and I didn't get into this one, you know. Um, uh, but you know, it's on my heart right now, like talking to our youth and, mm -hmm. you know, the whole trans thing is huge, huge in our, our uh, high school youth age. Um, it, it's just coming out of the woodwork, so all of a sudden we have millions of trans people. Um, and, you know, the argument is, well, you know, we didn't have an affirming culture before. And, and you know, now that we do all these, and it's like, no, you're, you're pumping this and pushing this. And, and what was a little bit of, hey, I don't quite fit stereotypes and mm -hmm. I don't quite feel comfortable in my own skin. Like, now you're, you're taking that and you're embracing that and you're putting legs on that mm -hmm. and you're, you're pushing it into something it's not, you know? And, you know, and, and you know, it's on my heart because, yeah, uh, trans teens have an 11 time suicide rate based uh, higher than, than, you know, uh, non-trans teens, mm -hmm. you know, that, that we're, we're seeing people that don't understand how they were made mm -hmm. and how significant they are run away from that and not realize, no, no, God doesn't make mistakes. Uh, there is sin and there is corruption in the process, but even then, God says, mm, but I'm going to use that. That's not a mistake. Yeah. You know, because you can bring up the downs and you can bring up the birth defects mm -hmm. and the, and you're like, oh, see, God makes mistakes. And God says, no, I didn't. I handmade that person. Yeah. And, and yeah, sin corrupted and, and sin, you know, there's brokenness in that person. Sure. But they're still made with a purpose and a plan. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I, you know, I, I know Mark wouldn't care about me saying this, but if you ever come to our 8 o'clock, Mark mm -hmm. Kicker right up front and his daughter Ellie. Yeah. Um, uh, and Ann Mark sit there and Ellie, she claps to every song. She's dancing in the aisle. Um, she leads the clap after every song. Mm -hmm. I mean, she worships and she is made with a purpose and a plan. And if anything, it's to bring joy to our worship, mm -hmm. you know? It makes me smile. Right. Or you, or you take like Des, you know, Des comes and, you know, um, and yeah. he's a Down syndrome uh, a young man, if you don't know. And he hugs and fist bumps everybody at our church. And you, you see people, you know, like walking up and all of a sudden does hugs and right fist bumps. They're like, all right, man, and you see a smile on their face, you know, like. Um, and it just breaks my heart because we didn't get into the pro-life thing mm -hmm. on this week. But, you know, that, you know, in Europe they're seeing almost zero Down syndrome kids being born yeah. because people are taking that test and, and aborting them. And mm -hmm. it's like, you, you cannot tell me. Now, now, by no means do I think living with a child with special needs is easy. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that. It, it is, it is. I would imagine most of them say it, it is a burden, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but all kids are at some level a burden. <laughs> you know, like, I don't think there's any one parent that's like, oh yeah, you know, I had this kid and I haven't done anything since. You know, like, they take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. um, it, I, I, I know it's a challenge, it's a challenge. Um, but I don't think any parent of a special needs kid would say um, that their child isn't special and has a purpose and has a plan. Yeah. And, and, and if anything, in, in their own life, like God gave me this child and it's revealed this to me or it's shown this to me mm -hmm. or it's made me be this, um, that everyone has a purpose and plan. I think the, the message from Sunday is, is understanding God's value in us and how he sees us. And I think to carry it out of worship and look at every other person that we encounter as the same. Yeah, is, is is valued in in the eyes right. of our God. And did you say? I want to say that you did. You know, when you're driving and you get angry at somebody, you say, yeah. Did you say that? Yeah, yeah. It's like okay, that's a child of God, <laughs> right? I guess valuable in the eyes of God, right? So let me just back off here, right? Yeah. It, it, it's it's incredible to think that the God of the universe hand makes us. And then the last the last point was to show us how valuable we were. Um, was verse 5, um, where it says he hymns us in. Mm. Um, and, and we talked about that a king um, would hem in the thing that was most valuable to him and protect it. That 
He comes in front and behind. Literally, that's what the word means, to secure the front and the behind. Um, you know, it's kind of like when a king was in battle, he would have the army surround him. You know, like, he would have himself in, you know. Um, but even in his in his castle or his, his wherever he lives, he would him in the thing most valuable. That, that would be the last thing they could get to and try and get. And it says, the God of the universe hymns us in. That we, we are that thing that he, he values and holds dear and protects. Um, and, and you're like, well, that doesn't seem right because look what happens to me and look at my day. And it's like, no, no, no. Satan went to war with you and he sent his own son to die for you. Mm-hmm. That shows you you are the most valuable thing to him. You're more valuable than his own son. That he loves you so much that he will protect and defend and win back. You know, I think of like the book of Hosea where, you know, like he marries a prostitute and the prostitute keeps going and he goes and finds her and she leaves him and he goes and finds her. Like, that's God. Like, no, no, no. You run away from me. You rebel from me. I hem you in and try and protect you and keep you safe. I say, don't go that way. Don't do these things. Don't. I love you so much. I want to protect you. Um, and it's just so beautiful to just end with that thought of God loves me and calls me valuable. Mm -hmm. Eight billion people on this planet, and yet God looks at me, he looks at you, he looks at each one of us and says, you are worth dying for. I love you, and you are valuable. And if we could just embrace that and live like that, I think, it, I think it would change our relationships. I think it would change how we treat one another. Mm-hmm. But I also think it would, it, would, it would change how we think of ourselves and the battle that goes on up here and the things we say to ourselves and the, the mm-hmm. things that we allow. Because there are people in relationships right now, you know, throughout the years, I've had people come up and they tell me what they're going through in their relationships. And I, and I look at them and I go, why do you allow that? And they're like, what? I'm like, you, you're more valuable. Mm-hmm. You, you should never let somebody talk to you like that. You should never let somebody treat you like that. Oh, you know, like, yeah, it's the third person he's cheated on me with, but, you know, like, he loves me and he takes good care. And it's like, no, 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 no. You are valuable. And you need to make him treat you with value. And you, and you need to make her talk to you with value. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you have to stand up for yourself at some point. And treat your and say, I am valuable. I'm not what they say about me. I'm not these things. And and, and in the biggest battle we will fight in doing that is with our own mind. Yeah. The meanest person in the world to you is yourself. Yeah. You belittle yourself more than anybody yeah. else. And God says, God calls that out and says that is sin. Mm-hmm. And we're like, it's just me talking to me. How can that be sin? God says, No, that's sin. You are tearing down and belittling and and, and that that negative self esteem. That impacts your life. Oh, yeah. And God says, stop believing that. You are valuable and you are loved and you are treasured. Live like that. I do know the worst about you. Mm -hmm. And I've declared that you are. You are worth saving. Mm -hmm. And then I sent my son to die for you. And I have saved you and declare you righteous now. And you're like, oh, God, if you really knew. God's like, I do. I I know better than you know. I know better than you know. And I love you. Yeah. And I, I have bought you at a price. Mm-hmm. And I call you valuable. It's beautiful. Beautiful passage. Mm. Can't wait for the next one. I know. Yeah. It's a good series. It's going to be fun. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Questions. Let's go. Okay, what's our question? Okay, so this comes from Stacy. Stacy. Here we go. Okay, my glasses. Let's see. Okay. Now I'm going to read directly. So this may be a weird question, but I've always wanted suggestions on how to, how best to approach someone, or if they approach me, how to ask them if they have a relationship with God without them freaking out. I can never find the right words. Here's what got me questioning. Um, if it was God prompting me to talk to the people, and if I, I've had this happen twice now, shopping, um, I was walking up an aisle with a young man ahead of me look, uh, looking at a few things. Within minutes, a box of items fell off the shelf behind me, and it wasn't because... It wasn't because uh, it was stuffed. I looked back, chuckled a bit, and the young man said, you must be resonating some power. 
The second time, an older gentleman approached me, and I've seen a few other times, he seems to do this with many people, he started talking about worldly things, politics, etc., while adding more than a few curse words, <laughs> which always makes me uncomfortable. I tried to listen intently, um, also trying to stay out of the way of other shoppers and pick up a few things I needed. He talked 10, 15 minutes with me. I felt frozen as I never want to interrupt someone who must just be super lonely. As we began moving to the next aisle, um, while he continued uh, talking, he said, let me get to my point. <laughs> As we stood at the end of the aisle, a package of bagels drops off the shelf about 15 feet down the row. He said, boy, there must be some power working here. So twice she had this encounter where something falls off a shelf and then whomever's near her says. And so she says, wasn't God nudging me to say something to this man or maybe try, try to create a distraction? I, I know it's weird, but sure would like to be able to say, it's the Holy Spirit working through me. You know, just to make some kind of, I think she's saying, how can I make a, uh, just a happenstance thing and somebody's remarking about it, turn that into a quip about my faith, my belief, our God. That's, I think that's the question she's asking. Without coming on too strong to a stranger and freaking them out. I think the most powerful thing we have is our own personal witness. Um, our own personal testimony. Mm -hmm. Um I never have found much value in declaring to other people what they should think or believe or see, you know, but I found a lot of power in just talking about what I see mm -hmm. and think and believe. Um, and people can, people can jump on that or not. Yeah. Those two instances. Yeah. I, I would say, you know, something like that, like having a little something ready yeah. of like, Holy spirit, what are you doing? You know, like, and then just, What'd you say? Holy Spirit? Like, well, he's at work everywhere. You know, like, right. you know, just, you, just, I think something to practice, an easy way to do this, is do it with your friends and your family already. Mm -hmm. Just constantly drop in little God things. Yeah. You know, like, um, you know, instead of saying, like, I saw a beautiful sunset, like something I do with my kids on the way to school, um, when I'm driving them, is, you know, instead of saying like, oh, look at that sunrise, how beautiful. Mm -hmm. I say something like, wow, look at how God painted this yeah. guy this morning. Yeah. You know, like, it, start start with your family yeah. and your friends, like dropping those God things into your regular mm -hmm. conversation where you're like acknowledging and pointing out. And then it'll naturally just slip out when you're in conversations with strangers yeah. to just be like, oh man, I saw God at work in that, you know? And someone will be like, wait, What'd you say? Mm -hmm. Well, how's that work in everything? No, you can't believe that. Yeah, I, yeah, I do. I believe, you know, like, like I think, you know, the, the moment you sit down and say, where are you at with God? Like, done. Or you say, I want to tell you about Jesus. <laughs> done. Like, no, they shut off. Like, you've just got to drop little things yeah. that they, that they uh, drop as she's talking about stuff dropping. <laughs> you just got to drop little things that they ask the questions yeah. that they want to hear. And, and it may, it may not lead to further conversation. Right. The person's going to walk away knowing <laughs> that friendly person shopping right. believes. Right. Like for instance, um, I, I, a couple podcasts ago talked about talking to my homosexual neighbor. Yeah. I purposefully said, cause he made a comment about me wearing Hey dudes. Yeah. I purposefully said, the boys at youth group uh, at my church all wear these. And I, so I, I got these. I purposefully said that because I baited that out there that he could say, wait, what, what do you do? I yeah. said, yeah, I'm a pastor. Mm -hmm. You know, like um, things like that where you've got them asking questions. That's, that's the way to go. Sure. So, yeah, just be ready with those. You know, like the Bible says, always be ready in season, you know, no matter what to say stuff. You know, like have an answer ready. Yep. Um, so bait them. Just drop it. Yeah. Good yeah. question. Thanks, Good question. Stacy. Okay, Robin Gore. Here we go. Um, very sweet email she wrote me. And then at the end says, <clears throat> If God is all-knowing and knows all that we are to do, where does free will fit in? Which I love this question. Yeah. We could, seriously, we could do a whole podcast on sure. this. But the short answer is always the simplest and easiest mm -hmm. answer. <clears throat> God knows everything that's going to happen. He's on mission. Mm -hmm. He knows all things. Um, but we don't know. So we have free will. It's kind of like um, 
you know, with my kid, I sit there and I say, hey, don't do that thing. You know, I'm going to leave you in your room. I don't want to see you, you know, like with Beckett, he's four. Um, we always do something called quiet time. So like for one hour right after lunch, they got quiet time where they just go to their room. They're not playing with anybody. Like just a little slow down time and they can play and do whatever they want. You know, inevitably I'll say like, hey, don't do this thing, you know, or don't jump off your bed or don't, you know, like, um, I know he's going to do it, mm -hmm. but he doesn't know that I know that. And he's going to have to wrestle with, do I listen to dad or not? Mm -hmm. um, and it's, and it's the same thing. Um, God does not, does not want us to sin. So that's the question. It's like, well, okay, I did this bad thing, but God knew I was going to do this bad thing. So, why, you know, is he okay with it? No, no, no. It, God is not bound by time. So God, from the very creation, he, at, in the beginning, God made time, space, and matter. Mm -hmm. He created it. And he's not bound by it. So he can see how everything plays out, and he can work accordingly. He's like, hey, I don't want you to do this bad thing. Well, with your free will, you have chosen to do that bad thing. God didn't force you. God didn't, you know, you chose to do that bad thing. Um, and God's like, okay, I knew you were going to do that. Even though you know what right and wrong is, I knew you were going to do that. And I have already prepared a way for you to repent. I've already prepared a way for you to make amends. I've already prepared a way to actually use this to my glory. Even though I don't want you to do that, I knew you were going to. Um, and then the big question, the the you know, one million dollar question mm -hmm. is, well, what about the places in the Bible where God says that He hardened somebody's heart, like mm -hmm. Pharaoh and stuff like that? Did they have free will? And, and I would say, I would say, as best as we can understand, this is one of those I don't know how that plays out things. Yeah. I'm not God. There are things that I don't know. Um, as best as we can see how that plays out. God purposefully told us he did that. Um, could God still do something like that today to somebody? Sure. Sure. Um, but it would all be to his plan and purpose because why did he harden Pharaoh's heart? <laughs> to let the Egyptians go. So that he could show his majesty through the ten plagues as a witness to all of the Egyptians mm -hmm. that he, he was superior. Yeah. So he hardened Pharaoh's heart so that all the Egyptians could see his glory. I mean, come on. That's... And then we don't, it, the Bible doesn't tell us, but it doesn't say that he hardened his heart forever. Right. You know, like for that season, he hardened yeah. his heart. Um, so, uh, do we have free will? 100%. I have no idea what God, will, what God has in store for me. And I get to make every choice as if it is my choice. But God knows what I'm going to do. And God's already out in front of me preparing repentance opportunities yeah. and redemption opportunities yeah. in that. And to tie that in, um, if we understand how valued we are by Him, then we will live in a way that glorifies Him. Right. We will live in a way that you know we know that we are valuable, that you are valuable, right. and um, and our free will, <laughs> our yeah. our ability to choose how we behave, what we say, how we act, things we do, things we don't do, right. things we don't say, um, plays into that. And, and even even when we make a bad choice. God is preparing consequences to make us never want to make that choice again. Right. Like he's he's out in front of us because he knows. <clears throat> Back to Beckett. Beckett yeah. jumps off the dresser. You told him not to. He gets hurt. Right. That's the consequence of jumping off the dresser. Right. I told you not to do that. I told you not to do it because I don't want you to get hurt. Right. God doesn't want us to get hurt by our sin. Right. He says, do not sin. Right. We sin. He lays it all out. We create the problem. We choose it. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, the big question is coming up. Well, what about... What about the Holocaust? You know, like 50 or what was it? Six million. Six million Jews, you know, are, are killed. Um, and it's like, you know, did, did God want Hitler to do that? Well, of course no. not. But did he know he was going to do it? Yeah. And was he already out in front of that and behind it? Was, was, was there opportunity throughout for Hitler to repent? I'm sure, mm -hmm. because I know my God. Yeah. Um, I'm sure that that at some point Hitler was going, man, I, I've gone too far here. I, I saw an interesting thing, totally off subject. 
um, but the leader of the sat Satanic Church in America. He's written a couple books. And uh, on his deathbed, on his deathbed, um, his final words were, oh no, I was so wrong, I was so wrong, mm -hmm. I was so wrong, mm -hmm. and he died. Yeah. That's all that. How interesting. Yeah. Let yeah. that sink in. Right. Um, but but I'm, I'm saying that there's there are people that choose to do evil. That is not what God wants. Mm -hmm. But God doesn't make us robots. He doesn't control us. He doesn't make us all choose him because then it wouldn't be love. Then it wouldn't be following. Right. It would be manipulation. And so we have free will. There's nothing stopping you from choosing something bad right, right now. Right now, I could hop in my car and drive 120 miles an hour and rob a bank if I wanted to. I choose not to. Mm -hmm. And that choice is 100% mine. Yeah. But God knows which one I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great question, Robin. Yeah. Keep the questions coming. For sure. Yeah. It's a lot more interesting than anything I would ask. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, well, thanks very much. Happy late Valentine's Day to yes. everybody. I hope Indeed. you feel loved and treasured. Indeed. And uh, now we enter into what I would consider to be the worst time to live in Omaha, Nebraska. The Super Bowl's over. There aren't any major holidays coming up. Well, my birthday's next week. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> and then March Madness. Right. Once Madness we get to March, sports. things start to look up. Yeah. The weather starts to get better. We've got all kinds yeah. of good stuff going on. But, well, thanks so much, Pastor. Hey, and, you know what? Hmm? We can have a guest. Next week. My parents will be in town. You want to bring my dad on? Oh, man. That would be so awesome. Yes. Oh, that would be so bad. That would, would be it? so bad. It would be bad for me. <laughs> I think it sounds great. Yeah. Yet yeah, next Tuesday, when we record, that's my birthday. Yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Well, what? I have to What be... a better guest. Yeah. Yeah. He can tell. He can tell the whole story. That's right, from birth to now. Yeah, <laughs> and all the things you've gotten wrong. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm in on that. We'll see. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Hey, uh, Grace Hills Church here in Elkhorn, Nebraska, two hundred two seven five Honeysuckle Drive. We meet three times for worship every Sunday: eight a.m., nine thirty a.m., and eleven a.m. Um, we're a growing church, but we are uh, accommodating as well. And uh, I have no doubt that you'll feel uh, welcomed like never before. So if you're looking for a church home, we invite you to check us out. And if you like 8 and 11, choose those. <laughs> but 9.30 is good too. 9.30 is good too. <laughs> God bless everybody.